Today on The Occult Detective, we're going to discuss just exactly what that means. So, in terms of fiction, an occult detective story is a story that takes the traditional tropes of a detective story and adds a supernatural element to it. I mean, that's very basic, but, you know, essentially that's what we're looking at. But what I want to discuss is what an occult detective means to me in the real world, not the world of fiction. It really, really just captured me, the, the idea of the, the supernatural tale intertwined with the mystery. And um, it's what I decided very early on that I wanted to do with my life. Um, I was fascinated with archaeology and anthropology, and I saw that as a way of exploring the supernatural world and investigating it. And it expanded kind of from there, you know, over the years. And my idea of what an occult detective was, as opposed to a paranormal investigator or a ghost hunter, or a, you know, that, that sort of thing, is that an occult detective educates themselves in all manner of magical systems and religious systems. Um, just having a broad knowledge of all these various things in that way being prepared uh, in any given situation with whatever type of entity you encounter or whatever type of ritual setting that you walk into, you have a familiarity and a base from which to work and unlock whatever mystery unfolds within that context. I have worked with police, um, conservation officers, and people in the, the private sector and public um, using those skills that I've, I've uh, acquired over these many decades of delving into this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where it lies with me, you know, that's how the occult detective moniker seems to fit is that it's an individual who is trained to recognize the various aspects of religiosity and the occult esoterica in general the broad knowledge of folklore and mythologies from as many disparate cultures as they can acquire and utilize those skills, that, that, that knowledge, into uh, entering into a dialogue, not only with practitioners, but with the entities that they interact with. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So let's take a look right now at the books that I'm reading, these came in from Llewellyn, um, review copies, and exciting stuff, and just adds to my arsenal. Um, we've got, uh, we've got this ex interesting, explore the evolution of Caribbean magic, voodoo, voodoo, and hoodoo. This is by Sebastian De La Croix. Yamanto Fernandez Trinidad uh, looks fascinating. I know broad sweeping areas, but the more knowledge I can acquire around it, I'm always happy to add to my knowledge base. We also have Beware the Banshees Cry. Now, this book is interesting. This is from Stephen J. Rolfs. So the folklore and history of messengers of death. Now, Celtic mythology, I'm well versed in, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to delving into this one. Uh, very interesting stuff. 
another book I'm very excited to look into and uh, I am a huge fan of Donald Tyson's writing and this is Incantations and Enchantments The Power of the Voice and the Breath and Magic I first became acquainted with that idea uh, through Aleister Crowley's work um, the idea of words of power and the vibration and the breath and all that all that came from the early uh, readings in Crowley and you know it's been a fascination with me it's especially I have issues breathing issues I'm suffering from an upper respiratory ailment right now but the idea of of breath being a central part of magical energy uh, is one that's always fascinated me and I look forward to seeing what Tyson has to say on that subject. The final book I want to share with you is the one I'm most looking forward to actually. This is A Magic at the Crossroads by Kate Fruler. This is the devil in modern witchcraft. When you separate the religious dogma from the symbolic nature of Christianity's ultimate rebel, who really is the devil? Kate Fruler presents this infamous figure as a symbol, not a deity, and reveals how you can use this radical philosophy to strengthen yourself and your witchcraft. I'm looking forward to what she has to say, but I'm also intrigued by a recent video, which I'll put a link down below, from Jason Miller. Uh, in which he kind of touches on that subject, which is stop trying to make dark spirits nice. And, you know, in that video, he discusses how in modern magical communities that they like to <coughs> take a dark spirit and 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 make a twist on it, right? So, like, uh, for instance, you take a <coughs> spirit that uh, uh, that you might conjure up to, to curse somebody with to something to let's say make them wither away well you know, somebody says hey well maybe I could do that to lose weight you know to wither myself just a little bit and uh, yeah, it doesn't work that way that's you know I, I firmly believe that and you know these 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 entities are real and as such, you have to treat them with the respect they're due. I think that's the kind of thing that Jason Miller was talking about in that video. Give it a look. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's why I'm kind of interested to see what uh, Fruler has to say about working with Old Scratch. Speak of the devil, and then walks the imp. All right, sorry it's a quick video, but uh, got a lot to get to. We'll talk again real soon. Thank <laughs> you.